Hi, hello, lovely people. Today, I'll be showing you how I paint portraits with acrylic paint. And I painted the kazoo kid because I felt like it. This is the reference photo I'm using. I know some people like to print out their reference photos, but I just use my phone because first of all, save the trees. And second of all, you can zoom in and adjust the brightness and shit, which is very nice. Also, fun little technology hack I use. If you go to settings and then screen time, you can see how long you've spent in the photos app on a given day. And then I just add up all the days and that's how I figure out how long I spent on a painting. I will be using a Blick Studio 9 inch by 12 inch wood panel. I think you're supposed to prime wood panels with gesso, but I do not because one, I'm lazy, two, gesso smells like death, and three, I like the feeling of painting on wood directly. Of course, my crusty dusty styrofoam tray. And these are the brushes I use. They're Princeton Select Lunar Blenders, but basically any flat or filbert brush will do the same thing. If you want more details about what I use, I made a whole video about my art supplies. So as you can see, I'm jumping straight in with paint. I'm using this deep magenta, but you can really use any dark-ish color like burnt sienna or red. I would recommend using a warmer tone color as opposed to like a blue, which I find a lot more harsh and sometimes makes the color palette muddy. For my first layer of sketching, I am watering down the paint a lot so it's very transparent and free-flowing. I'm just mapping out the basic features and shapes based on what I see in the photo and progressively building up with more opaque strokes. And this is what it looks like. Now that I have the first layer down, I'm using a smaller brush for details and I'm diluting the paint a lot less. I like to start with the nose because it serves as a centering point for the rest of the face. So I kind of use it as a reference point to locate where the other features are relative to it. So like, how far away are the eyes from the nose? What part of the mouth lines up with the nostrils, etc. Sketching with paint does take some practice and the proportions sometimes come a little wonky, but that is okay because perfection is not what we're going for. This method is a lot less precise than pencil sketching, but it's far more efficient and in my opinion, more fun. Something about the tediousness of sketching with pencil and having to erase and shit and perfect small details sucks all the joy away. Also, people who do grids, I could never. I think I'd rather die. Sorry about it. In my opinion, part of what makes painting fun is that it can be loose and expressive. So this is basically a series of constant adjustments until I feel roughly comfortable with my outline. Now it's time to add color. These are some of the colors I'm using for the background. I start by mapping out the darkest areas. Also, I just wanted to preface, take everything I say with a fat grain of salt. I'm self-taught, so I never learned how to paint properly, but this is just what works for me. I always paint the background first because I feel like it makes the most sense spatially, and since I like it to be looser, I don't want to have to paint around the edges of the foreground. Now I'm filling in with some mid-tones. As you can see, I don't actually blend when I paint. This is completely stylistic preference, but I just like to leave blocky strokes and then layer them without having to worry about blending or mixing the same colors again. I actually like the fact that acrylic dries fast because I've learned to work within the constraints of the medium and it also forces me to not be excessively perfectionistic, which I really appreciate. Now I'm going in with some highlights using a smaller brush. So to recap, the general premise is I start with the shadows, fill in with mid-tones, and then add highlights, and then layer with intermediate colors and continue adjusting as necessary. Also, I start with a bigger brush and gradually use smaller and smaller strokes as I continue layering. Okay, now it's time for the skin. It's the same principle as before. Start with the darker areas, fill in with mid-tones, then add highlights, and transition from bigger brush to smaller brush. A lot of people ask me how I choose my colors. If I'm using a reference, I usually just look at the photo and exaggerate the saturation. So if I see an area in the reference photo that's tinted blue, I'll make it extra blue. I also really like juxtaposing complementary colors like blues and oranges and purples and yellows. This is basically my default white people skin color palette. My base is a mixture of Mars orange and cobalt blue, which produces a pretty neutral beige. And from there, I add white to make it lighter, or more blue to make it cooler, more orange to make it warmer, or magenta to make it pinker, etc. Make sure you're constantly wiping your brush on a paper towel or the edge of your palette so your colors don't get muddy. 
for lighter toned skin, I usually use cooler tones like blues and purples in the shadow areas like under the eyes and chin, and warmer tones like pinks and oranges in areas with more blood circulation like the cheeks, lips, and tip of the nose. A key factor in making a pale person look like they're in shadow and not that they have a darker skin tone is to use cool tones like cobalt blue. Whereas for painting a darker skin tone, you would usually use richer and warmer tones like browns and reds. So for pale skin, even if the value of the color might be dark, make sure you're paying attention to hue. When it comes to using water, using too much makes the paint runny and diluted, but not using enough makes it hard to apply smooth strokes. So I like to keep a spray bottle or keep a little puddle of water in the corner of my palette that I dip my brush in to keep it moist. And make sure you have a water jar on hand to keep your brushes in while you're not using them. For highlights, I usually don't use pure white because you rarely actually encounter it. Even if an area looks really bright, it's typically just relative to the colors around it. So here I'm mixing it with some of the beige I already mixed. Okay, now time for the hair. It's literally the same thing, except my strokes are more elongated and directional. Blonde hair is never straight up yellow. I'm actually mainly using grays, blues, and oranges, and reserving yellow mostly for the highlights. I like to leave some of the underlying magenta sketch exposed because, I don't know, I like it. I think it makes it a little spicy. It's kind of boring, pretty straightforward, pretty self-explanatory. Don't forget to paint the edges of your surface. It can be a big pain in the big booty, but I do it because I think it ties a piece together. It's kazoo time! Literally same principle as always, shadows, then midtones, then highlights. This is not a vape, I repeat, this is not a vape. After letting the painting dry for a couple hours, I'm finishing it off with some Liquitex gloss varnish. And here is the final product. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was at least somewhat helpful and or enjoyable, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye!